manufacturer makes cars and trucks in a factory that is divided into two shops. The first shop, which does basic assembly, needs five worker days per truck and two worker days per car. The second shop, which does both finishing touches, needs three worker days for both cars and trucks. The first shop has 180 work days available and the second shop has 135 work days available. The profit is $500 per car and $700 per truck. How many of each type of vehicle should the manufacturer produce each week to maximize profit? What is the maximum profit? <clears throat> Given the questions being asked, how many of each type of vehicle should the manufacturer produce tells us that the number, we're going to let two variables uh, represent the number of cars and the number of trucks. So we're going to let x represent the number of cars and we're going to let y represent the number of trucks. Okay, The first two inequalities that we need to automatically think about are, are uh, the fact is that neither truck nor car will be less than zero. So we know therefore that x is greater than or equal to zero and y is greater than or equal to zero thus putting our graph into the first quadrant of the coordinate plane. Alright, looking at we're going to have the first shop which does um, the first shop does basic, basic assembly basic assembly so that's going to be a um, inequality. The second shop does finishing touches so that's going to be our second inequality. You know the first shop has a maximum of 180 worker days available. So anything that we do less than that is a good thing. Uh, the second shop has a maximum of 135 worker days available. So anything less than that also is okay. We notice that for cars, in the first shop they have two worker days per car. So for instance, if I said I produced or was were working on five cars, I would have ten worker days available to me in shop number one. Alright, so two times x represents the total amount of time taken for working on cars in the first shop. And three x represents the total amount of time working on cars in the second shop for finishing touches. Likewise, in the first shop, trucks get five worker days. So five times y represents the total amount of time spent for working on trucks in the first shop. And three y represents the total amount of time spent working on trucks in the second shop. So the sum of the, wor or the worker days in the first shop added together have to be less than or equal to 180. There's our third inequality. And the sum of the worker days for both cars and trucks in the second shop have to be less than or equal to 135 in the second shop. So that's our second inequality. So let's go ahead and fix our calculate the necessary points in order to graph these two. Let's say for instance we're going to let our first inequality um, I'm going to do that in green. <clears throat> so if I let x be 0, so now 2 times 0 is 0, so we're left with 5y, and we're going to concentrate on the equals part, which is the line itself, 5y equals 180. Okay. So if I divide both sides of that equation by 5, then I get 36. So then I get y equals 36. Likewise, if I let y be 0, so now 5 times 0 is 0, I'm left with 2x equals 180. If I divide both sides of that equation by 2, now I get x is equal to 90. So my second point is going to be 90 comma 0. So 0, 36 
and then 90 comma 0 So my shading, it's less than, so my shading is to the inside. So that represents my first inequality. Let's go to the second inequality, and we're going to do this one in red. So if I let x be 0, then I have 3y equals 135. And if I divide both sides of that equation by 3, I get y is equal to 45. Okay, doing the same thing, letting y be 0. So I get 3x equals 135. Divide both sides of that equation by 3. And I get x equals 45. So those two points determine the next line. So I have 0. 45 and 45 comma 0 all right so my common shaded region is going to be this portion will make that yellow So that's my common shaded region right there. The next step is to determine the vertices of this common shaded region.